Hi, as my voice kind of carries naturally. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here. My name is Brett Bittner. I'm the Executive Director for the Advocates for Self-Government. You've probably seen the world's smallest political quiz if you've ever done any tabling on campus. Uh, it's something that we offer as a way for people to find their political tendency. It's not going to identify what party you should vote for. It's not going to identify how you should consider issues. It's the starting point where you naturally begin your political decision making. And so when you take the world's smallest political quiz, there's a diamond chart. I've got plenty up here. If anybody needs one, if you've never taken it before, please do um, stop by. As Chris said, I was definitely going to make sure that you did take the quiz. And I would like to thank Chris Bengel for once again opening for me. He does that a lot. Uh, he does a lot of things right before I do to help build everybody up for the headliner. I'd like to thank Greg for opening for me as well. I like he hasn't done that for close for me. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. That's fine too. Um, so, like Travis said, I've never been anything but a libertarian. Now, that it doesn't necessarily mean political party-wise. I didn't really identify as a member of any political party until about 10 years ago. But I've known since I was 12 that conservatives and liberals, neither one spoke to me on issues in a round sense. No one spoke to what I believed in in their political philosophy and the way that they were talking about issues. I actually have a very similar story to Travis about how I got interested in politics, and it was in 1992 when that little guy from Texas with big ears was talking about something that was different than President George H.W. Bush and soon to be President Clinton. He was talking about something that was different, and that was appealing to me. The beauty of that is libertarians are talking about something different. And that's appealing to a lot of people right now. Because there are so many things that are happening in the world and the political landscape that aren't speaking to, especially millennials, but Americans in general. We're not pigeonholed like we once were as conservative Republicans, liberal Democrats, and a few people who just don't vote. For the most part now, we're actually independent thinkers. We're centrists. We're moderates. We're not necessarily hardline conservative or hardline progressive. We are thinking about things in a very different way. And the beauty of everybody, think, or so many people thinking about things in a different way, is they're looking at new views. And that's where our opportunity comes to pass. Um, also, like Travis, I got re-engaged in politics in 2007. Um, I actually traveled to the debate that Travis talked about in South Carolina, um, where I saw the fight between Rudy Giuliani and Ron Paul on stage live. And that was the moment that the glass shattered for me that I needed to reinvest my efforts in a political way. And as many people have said, Ron Paul spoke to me. Well, he did. It was already there. But what he did for me was he brought it out, and he brought it to the forefront for me to make sure that I was involved in politics. I had taken a big break after having served uh, working for Ross Perot before I was even old enough to vote for the guy when he was running for president in 96. Um, he didn't get on the ballot where I lived, so my job was over about July. Um, but I was actually actively trying to get him on the ballot in the state of Georgia. That awakening. 15, or, uh, sorry, 11 years later, when I heard Ron Paul talk about our foreign policy, was something that got me re-engaged in politics. Today, I can say that if there's something political that has happened, if there is electoral politics that has taken place, I have done it. I've knocked on doors. I've, put, I've delivered yard signs. I've been out there shaking hands. I've been out there kissing babies. I've been out there giving the quiz. I've been at pride parades. I've been at gun shows. I've been at book fairs. On top of that, I've actually run for office. And I am a libertarian unicorn. Not because I've run for office, not because i won an election, but the people that elected me the first time came back and elected me a second. There are very few libertarians that can say that. I think there are six total in the country that can say they've been re-elected as a libertarian. So when it comes to politics, I'm now no longer involved because I want to make political change. I'm involved so that I don't have to be. I don't want to be out knocking on doors. I don't want to have to run for office. I do it as a measure of self-defense. 
I want to make sure that there are people who aren't going to be able to use force against me because personally, I believe in the golden rule. The golden rule that was booed in 2012 in the same state where I saw Ron Paul five years before in a debate where he talked about treating people like you want to be treated. And he got booed by the Republican audience in that presidential debate. And so because I live my life that way, I want to inspire others to do that. For me, it's not about winning an election, because what was more important to me when I was running for office was not the fact that I got elected or reelected, but it was that I was out there and I was talking to the people that I was going to be able to help change hearts and minds. Many of them had never heard of a libertarian before. And that was okay, because I was talking about, as Greg and Chris pointed to, I met them where they were. I talked about the issues that were important to them. Because as libertarians, what we have is a giant ball of knowledge. And we are right. We are right on so many things. Because without a libertarian perspective, we wouldn't be able to talk about prosperity. We wouldn't be able to talk about peace. But the problem is, is we get so focused on this giant ball of knowledge that we have that we don't actually engage and we don't listen to what people are saying to us. Now, they're exactly right about asking questions, but you also have to figure out, okay, they've had a ton of time to have authoritarians tell them what they should or shouldn't believe. And they've, they've made it so that they can program them to be inside this little box. And that little box is way smaller than the big ball of things that we believe as liberty-leaning people, whether we're big L libertarians, whether we're libertarian-leaning Republicans, whether we're uh, libertarian-leaning Democrats, because believe it or not, there are some out there. In fact, if I weren't a big L libertarian, I would totally be a Democrat. I haven't voted for a Republican since 2012, and that was only to make sure that Ron Paul got my vote in the presidential preference primary. Uh, so we have to figure out where their box that they've been kind of shoved into fits within the ball of knowledge that we have. And so when we engage with people in a fun way, like they talked about, they talked about the event that I host every Friday in Indianapolis at Black Acre Brewing, which you guys are all welcome to join. It starts at 6 o'clock. Um, there's no hard start time or end time. It's come, in, come as you are, come when you want. Um, but we literally ask people to leave campaigning at the door because it isn't about electoral politics. It's about us getting to know one another. It's about us having fun with one another. And it's also about us uh, having a good time enjoying an adult beverage, so you have to be at least 21. Um, but we also engage in a different way to make sure that people are getting to know us as people. Because it's one thing to get an email from this guy because you're on an email list and he's asking you to help for this event or that event, or he wants you to give money to this candidate or raise money for this political party or this affiliate, but he's still a nameless, faceless person. And what, one of the things that I like to focus on is for us to actually be out there engaging with people and engaging with new people and doing it in a fun way. Uh, Greg, Chris, and I are all on the board of a group in Indianapolis called America's Future Foundation. Um, and we host essentially fun time drinking events that are focused on networking, but they have a political bent. Uh, we host um, speakers that have a very specific issue uh, sometimes we try to put on panel discussions about transit, but nobody wants to come. Uh, and, uh, but at the end of the day, people are getting to know Greg. They're getting to know Chris. They're getting to know Aaron. They're getting to know James. All these people have been to these events and have introduced themselves as individuals. And then later on, it's not just Greg, the guy you met at AFF, or, Greg the, the, or Chris, the guy you met at the... Uh, Marion County Libertarian uh, Social, it's the guy that you became friends with. It's now Greg, your friend, or Aaron, your friend, or Sarah, your friend. Um, and so these are all people that, for me, I moved up here two and a half years ago, and aside from Chris and Rupert, I don't think there was anybody really in the LP that I was, or in the Libertarian movement in Indiana, aside, oh no, and Matt, um, that I really knew when I moved up here. So I utilize my network to get to know people and befriend people that way, and people got to know me that way as well. And what it made easier was when I had an ask, they were more likely to say yes because we were friends before we were political allies. That's strong. All right, well, that's <laughs> I don't really consider that. I was being generous. Uh, so 
The other thing that we can do is when we act in a libertarian way, when we f see a need that needs to be addressed, when we see that there is something that needs to happen, and we take the initiative to do it, rather than outsourcing the responsibility of that to government, something that Rupert does in his program, Rupert's Kids, who I've, I've been very involved with and, and very supportive of, um, he saw a need in the community and he filled it. And we need to do more things like that, where we're actually seeing a need. How many of us are going out there and are serving soup at soup kitchens? Because we know that there's a need there. How many of us are out there making sure that kids that are going to school have the proper supplies that they need because we know that there are kids that aren't gonna have them because their parents aren't gonna provide, but as a community, as an individual, we can step in and help because we know the need is there. So when we take on those actions, we actually get we're a magnet for people because they see that we are addressing what's happening, we're addressing a need, and people then come to us. And it doesn't matter how many gun shows you go to, it doesn't matter how many book fairs you have, it doesn't matter how many times you're tabling on campus, because you're having people come to you 365 days a year. Because they're interested in you, they're interested in what you're doing, and then you're gonna be able to talk to them where they are, find out their interests, ask them the questions to identify the libertarian in them. And when you're able to identify the libertarian aspect of that person, you can build them. So I'm going to go ahead and end things there because I know that we have a hard stop at 9 o'clock and I want to make sure that everybody has uh, an opportunity to talk tonight. And I know that you guys will probably have questions later. And so I want to, make, I want to honor Brandon's commitment to the university uh, in the time that we have. So uh, I want to thank you guys very much. I do have a couple things up here. If anybody uh, would like some free lift rides, uh, I have uh, a couple cards up here. Stickers, freedom is easy, math is hard. Uh, I know on a college campus there are a lot of people who have a little bit, there you go, <laughs> And I also have a couple copies of the World's Smallest Political Quiz if any of you haven't taken it, um, and I'll be available for questions and stuff after. So thank you guys very much. Woo!